For the first DIY project, I wanted to make a brass cocktail side table. And the last time I was at Ikea, I saw these light gray saucers, the bigger one being $4 and the smaller one was just $2. And I thought that that would make kind of a good base and top for my table. I had this extremely tall candlestick holder that I currently wasn't doing anything with that I had thrifted many, many months ago. And I thought this would make the perfect combination to get this little martini side table. So to start, I'm just going to be using some E6 thousand you always want to start with the adhesive that takes the longest to cure and then kind of work your way down so I ended up using three adhesives total next up I used some super glue gel and just to give you a reference I probably did about a teaspoon of e6000 and then I used one of these small tubes completely um, for both the bottom and the top with those adhesives kind of laid down, it's time to go with the one that's gonna work the fastest, which is gonna be the hot glue, which is just gonna keep everything kind of together until the other two adhesives kind of solidify because it does take quite a bit of time for E6000 to completely cure and I wanna make sure that it is a nice, sturdy little side table. So I wanted to create the base first, so I just grabbed a heavy book and I sat that on top of the candlestick holder for about 10 minutes just so everything was like starting to get activated. And then I was able to just kind of lift that up, flip it upside down, and now kind of apply the same concept um, to the bottom of the top of the side table. With those pieces starting to come together now, the basic structure of the side table is complete. And basically I just wanted to get it solid enough so that way I could just kind of like transport it into the garage so I could spray paint it. So I'm gonna be using this gold metal spray paint by Designer Master and it's really nice when you have some patinaed brass and you're trying to match something to that color because there's a slight green undertone and I swear I could do a whole video about undertones, but you wanna make sure that your undertones are matching, if that makes sense. So because of that green undertone, I did decide to use this spray paint over some of my other gold favorites. I loved these saucers specifically for a few reasons. One, I really liked it's just like modern design. It's just very simple, which you can always look to Ikea for those sleek, simple, modern designs. And then also I love this sort of like porous quality that these saucers had. So after I spray painted the entire thing gold, I decided it needed some shadows. It needed some depth. So I took some black metallic spray paint and I just gently just dusted the spray paint on and it was like the perfect thing just to add that movement. And here's a final look on how it turned out. For the next project, I wanted to make a checker print doormat. And if you watch my last Dollar Tree video, you'll know that I made a checker printed vase using two of the colors from the Dollar Tree. And I love that project so much. I wanted to kind of do something like that, but make it into a rug or a mat form. So I'm gonna be using the Trampa doormat, which is a very affordable um, blank doormat that you can get at Ikea. And it's totally customizable. So you can literally do like whatever you're really into at the moment and not really break the bank to do so. So I love this one at H&M, but unfortunately it was sold out in the color and the size that I wanted. So I thought, why don't we try to make something pretty similar? In order to get that checker print effect, I took some painter's tape and as straight as I possibly could, I laid each piece of tape across the doormat and then I repeated that same process going in the opposite direction. I found that it was helpful to kind of use a spacer, so I just had a little scrap piece of tape just to make sure I was pretty evenly keeping my spacing um, so then that way everything would kind of connect. So I mixed two different colors together. I did like this taupey brown and black. I didn't want it to be this like stark black I thought it would be nice to just kind of lighten it up a bit and not make it so high contrast. So after mixing those two together, I kind of toyed with the idea like, should I even do this or should I just spray paint it? But I opted to just use a foam brush and just kind of really dig it into those little bristles because I felt like the spray paint, I would have to have used so much of my spray paint to really get the coverage that I wanted. And I was able to have a lot more control um, painting instead of spray painting. With the color mixed down, now I'm just pressing in that paint into those bristles and it's okay if a little bit of paint gets on the tape because that's why we have it there as our safeguard and this actually went by really fast I was able to complete this step in under 30 minutes And with that first round of paint dry, it's just time now to make kind of a stencil to connect each square to each other so you get that checker print effect. 
To make the stencil, I'm gonna take four small pieces of painter's tape and make a square around. I chose to do each of the squares in between this set individually, just so then that way I had a little bit more control in case things weren't perfectly lined up. I didn't want it to look wonky and just, I wanted it to be very seamless. So I decided that I was just gonna make one stencil so it was consistent the whole way through. And now basically one by one, I have to kind of connect all of those squares together. So I just decided to do only black paint for this one, just so there was a little bit of variation happening. And I used a really small little foam brush this time to make sure I got into all of the little crevices. And I just kept moving that little stencil all the way around this mat until it was completely finished. For the next project, I wanted to make an arch rattan wall shelf. And to do that, I'm gonna be using these Gilstad wall decorations. You get three of these woven. They're almost like placemats with their wall hangings. And they're actually really beautiful. And the fact that you get three of them for under $20, I think is a really fair price point. And I actually had a few projects planned using this product from Ikea. But to start, I just wanna share with you guys the arch woven shelf. So the first thing I did was I had this wooden round that I had thrifted a while back and it was only $3. It is 12 inches across and I'm just kind of finding the center and I'm leveling it to make sure that my cut would be nice and straight. If you don't have a miter saw, you could also use a circular saw or you could use a miter box. Again, that would just take more time. So I decided I was just going to use my miter saw just because it's quicker and there's minimal setup. And so I basically just took my miter saw down one way and then turned the wooden round around. And so those two pieces would connect. With the wooden round now cut in half, it's just time now to cut the smallest of the three wall hangings in half as well, so that way we can attach it to each piece. I ended up just hot gluing one side down and then that way I knew that the excess would fit the other half of the wooden round and then I just hot glued the other side as well so that way they would be nice and even and everything was gonna align perfectly. To connect these two pieces together, I just decided to use some L brackets that I'll link in the description box below. And here is a look on how that turned out. As for the project that didn't end up turning out, I wanted to still share it with you guys so you guys can learn from my mistakes. So I thought I would take the biggest of the three now and I was going to make a kind of smaller wall mirror just to add to a gallery wall, but still add that element of texture. So I measured how big my mirror was and then I also had this um, wooden embroidery hoop that was quite small, but it fit exactly the size of the mirror. So my plan was I was just gonna put the mirror in here so everything looked just really seamless and nicely put together. So I thought for adhesive, I was going to end up using some super glue gel as well as a little bit of hot glue to kind of connect all of these pieces together. And for some reason, it didn't cross my mind that I shouldn't press so hard on the mirror because then this is what happened. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to complete this project because the mirror did break. So this is just a friendly reminder for me, in case you were wondering, don't press so hard on mirrors because they will in fact snap. But that's all part of the fun of DIYing and making things yourself. There's always something to be learned. So I hope you guys liked today's video. If you did, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and tell me down in the comments which project was your favorite and I will see you next Sunday. Bye.